All right, I got a 2014 Chevy Impala in here. Uh, she said she had ABS light on, trash control, and I went ahead and put the launch on it and scanned it. And it looks like we got a uh, C0040 and C0040F, which is uh, different levels of this same code, but this is the F stands. There's uh, a couple different levels on the code, and that's F. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure what the F is for. Uh, I can look it up, but uh, anyway, we got C0040. If you don't know, these Impalas have the wheel bearing and the wheel sensor built in together, and the wire runs through right by the axle. It's kind of really, in my opinion, a bad design. And uh, sometimes those wires will rub against the axle and cause uh, issues with this. If you get like a wheel cylinder issue like this. Also, another thing on these cars is the wiring harness going to the wheel sensor sometimes. Can be faulty and that's there's a I think there's a tsb on there there's also a tsb on the encoder ring sometimes debris can get between the encoder ring and the uh sensor itself and cause issues i don't know if it's on the 14 though because these are the built-in sensors so I, I don't have to check on that but uh anyway uh, i'm gonna go ahead and take the right front wheel off and we're just gonna take it apart and see if we can see anything wrong with the wires or uh anything like that and if i don't see anything wrong with the wires i might just replace the bearing because uh that's usually what it is is the actual sensor itself was having problems i took it for a drive and put it on a, and put it on a graphing mode uh with the live data and it was working really well and then just out of the blue one time it spiked up real fast for a split second and then uh the light came on because the light wasn't on when i first drove it and the light came on and i could see on the graph the right front uh ABS sensor spiked up real real high for a split second and just that's all it took and it turned the light on on the car I think there's like a five mile per hour difference or something like that between The wheels and it'll it'll shoot off that code. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna go Start taking it apart over there and see what's going on with it or try to figure it out All right, so if we get in here You can kind of see here's the sensor uh, and the wiring harness and the sensor you can see how it comes out right by the axle and you can't even see the sensor you know normally they would mount it right here there's a hole here and a 10 millimeter nut you take it out or a bolt and take it out and then you slide it out well this is all built into the sensor here and you can see it's right up against the axle right here so i don't know i can't tell if it's rubbing or what's going on with the wire and it could just be the sensor itself is bad or, or uh messing up um in which case you got to change the, the entire uh bearing so I, I don't know for sure i just want to get in there and look and the only way to get in there and look and see this wire is take this axle out. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it from the harness here. And uh, we'll go ahead and start taking this axle and brakes off and then get down in there and see if we can see anything. Maybe the wires are rubbed through or uh, something like that. I'm not sure. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and take this axle out. Or at least move it out of the way over here. And then... Uh, Go from there. So I think on this, uh, these are 13 millimeter on the on the uh, brakes. We're just going to move the brakes out of the way first, and uh, get this bracket out of the way and calip and rotor and all that, and then go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and get the tools ready, and we'll start taking this apart. Well, the caliper is just 13 mil. Go ahead and pull this out of the way, and then we'll take the caliper bracket off. All right, the caliper bracket should be 15 mil. Got those two bolts. And we'll pull that out of the way, pull the rotor off, and then we can get down. Uh, we'll start taking this uh, axle out real quick. You got the rotor out of the way. Go ahead and pull this axle nut off, 36 mil. And uh, hopefully that's not seized or anything. I'll push on it. Yep. So that's good. That's not seized. So I think these are 21 millimeter up here. Let me uh, get my deep well real quick and we'll take that out. Take these two bolts out to hold the knuckle to the strut here. And then that should give us enough room to pull this back and then we can get to our bearing and wiring and see what we're looking at. 21 millimeter here, we're just gonna go ahead and take these bolts and nuts out. And there 
You probably have to tap on these uh, bolts out that way. Don't you? Don't just beat on real hard. Either put your nut back on a little bit, and just give them a little couple love taps, or use a drift and tap them out. But don't uh, beat on them and mess them up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick, and then we're just gonna pull this back out, pull this whole thing out. I'm gonna push in on your axle while you do that, and then uh, we'll look at the wheel bearing in the sensor. All right, you got three bolts inside here, uh, 13 millimeter. I already got two loose. I'm just going for this last one, and I gotta hold this. Anyway, I'm gonna kind of hold. I can't hold the camera, and hold this. But I'm gonna hold this up and then get these. Uh, I got already got the two bottom ones loose. And when this comes loose, you will have your heat, sh your uh, shield here. Be careful you don't bend that or drop it or something. Just kind of hold it all when it comes loose. Sometimes these can be pretty tough to get out. Uh, they get seized in there, so hopefully this one's not. But uh, anyway, you got these three 13 millimeter bolts. I got one more out, and then we're gonna pull this out. Yeah. It's already separate here from the uh, the knuckle, so I don't look like it's gonna have any kind of seizing problems. Still got one kind of. I'm gonna kind of hold this with my leg and get this last one out because it's gonna fall. I think it's, that, it's actually that loose. Sometimes these things can be a real pain to get out. You gotta use a slide hammer or beat it. So anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and pull straight out. That's how these come out. So uh, she went ahead and okay to get a new wet bearing for it. So uh, I don't see anything wrong with the wiring. And it doesn't really totally surprise me because it's not. it wasn't uh, acting up all the time. It actually, I drove it for about uh, probably 15, 20 minutes before the light came on. And it's actually raining today. So uh, anyway... Um, I drove it a little bit before the light came on and, uh, so it wasn't like something that was a constant fault code. It was just, I guess, coming and going. So anyway, that's where we're at with it. I'm going to go ahead and replace it. I don't know. There's not much else diagnostic wise. It's obviously the wiring is working because it does work most of the time. Uh, you could have the wiring harness issue. Like I said before, that's kind of common on these. They do sell the wiring, uh, harness. I think it's about 40 bucks at most places. To replace that i don't suspect that just because this is working most of the time it just you know acts up here and there so uh anyway we're gonna replace this bearing and uh go get that come back and we'll install it all right so always check your auto parts before you leave the store uh i should know better but i got went and got one uh, this is the second one i had to go back because the first one the sensor was gone this wire wasn't it was just not there so it was some kind of defect. Uh, he double checked it, the box part number, everything was right. And this was just not there. So I had to end up going back, get another one. So all we're gonna do is just slide that in um, and make sure you put your shield back in, you know, first and then put that in. So we're just gonna slide that back in, line up the bolts and tighten it up. All right, so we're just got this, make sure your heat shields uh, or your shield is uh, oriented right. You know, you want the open area towards the, where the brake hopper is gonna go. You're going to have uh, the wire end going to be up top because that's going to come out uh, off off here to the side and uh, hook up to your connector. So you kind of want that oriented right. Uh, you don't want to put it over here because you can't clock it wrong. So anyway, that's uh, clock where it's supposed to be. And we're just going to put the three bolts back in. I just got this last one to tighten. So all three bolts are tight. And now we're just going to slide the axle back in and uh, start putting it back together. All right, so I just slid the axle in and uh, made sure that I got good clearance over here on this side where the wire's at, put it back in the bracket. You can see the wire is real close to the axle there, but it's not touching. I got my light real far down in there and it's clear from the axle. It's close enough to make you uncomfortable about it, but that's just how it is. That's how it's designed from the factory. So uh, I don't like that design personally. I just think it's recipe for disaster. But uh, anyway, it is what it is. That's how it is. Just make sure this is put back in the clamp, factory clamp so it stays where it's supposed to. And then I uh, just slid the axle back in here. I got these started. Sometimes on these up here, if you put a screwdriver through and kind of manipulate, you can get them started. So we're just going to tighten these two 21mm uh, bolts here and uh, start tightening the axle up. Kind of snug this up, and then I'll get the torque spec on that, and we'll put the brakes back on. Go 
ahead and tighten those the rest of the way, uh, and then we'll start putting the brakes back on. On the axle nut, the first pass is 111 foot pounds. Then you loosen it 45 degrees and then tighten it 184 for the final pass. Normally, what I do is either put something in here, a big uh, pry bar between the lugs and hold it. Uh, that's probably the easiest way. On a front wheel drive car, sometimes the transmission will hold it. But uh, anyway, that's the torque spec on that lug nut or that <laughs> wheel nut, axle nut, sorry. All right, I went ahead and put the brakes on the two 14 millimeter uh, or 15 millimeter for the back caliper. And then uh, the bracket, and then 13 millimeter for the bra for the uh, caliper. I'm gonna go ahead and straighten the wheel, torque this uh, lug nut, the axle nut down, and then put the wheel back on. And then we'll just uh, clear the codes out and drive it a little bit and see if the codes come back. All right, so we got the ABS light on, service uh, traction control message right here, and then the uh, car wiping out or doing a burnout, depending on how you look at it. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear those codes out. And all of it should go out. So everything just went out. So we'll just take it for a quick ride and uh, make sure nothing comes back on. The good thing about it is it's raining today, so there might be, you know, it might stimulate it a little bit more than just dry weather. So anyway, we'll go take it for a quick ride. Uh, last time it came on about three miles, so I'll just drive it. Uh, Take it on a little maybe five or ten mile trip and make sure nothing comes on. All right, so I don't know how well this is focused. This is the uh, right front speed sensor, the one we changed. And you can see they're all four the same, uh, the same pattern. Drove it about 10 miles, no lights are on, so we'll call this a fix. So I don't, even though I don't like the design of this, uh, cause you gotta change the bearing with the wheel sensor and that's kind of crappy, but uh, you know, it is what it is. I think, I think they changed that the next year i think 15 or 14 they changed it to where a normal one where it just kind of bolts into the control arm anyway it's pouring like crats and dogs now so i'm gonna get off here as always thanks for watching and god bless